nice to be here. <laughs> Lily Dell says to say hello. How many people have been to Lily Dell before? Quite a few of you. Okay, thank you, thank you. I always like to start off with a little bit of humor. Many years ago when I first was traveling at a minister, this young lady comes to me uh, for a reading. She sits in front of me, and she looks very serious at me, and I say, oh, your father is here. And she says, no, he's not, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, do you know what I do? No, some, my friend told me to come and see you. <laughs> well, the rest of the conversation was very interesting. Okay. You know, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be intuitive, creative, and intelligent? Who are you not to be? You're a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that's within you. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And when you let your light shine, you unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as you are liberated from your fears, and everybody knows how to spell fear, right? False evidence appearing real. And when you are liberated from your fears, your presence automatically liberates others. Your presence automatically liberates others. But no man can reveal to you aught but that which already lies asleep in the dawning of your knowledge. The teacher who walks among his students gives not of his wisdom, but rather of his lovingness. If he is indeed wise, he bids you not enter the house of his wisdom, but rather leads you to the threshold of your own mind. Leads you to the threshold of your own mind. Now, the purpose of spiritualism is to realize that life goes on forever. But in that spirit world, we also have spirit guides and angels that come and work with us. Now, the purpose of a master teacher showing up in your life is to wake up the master who lives inside of you. You're not going to get into heaven by telling them who they are. They know who they are. They're here to tell you who you are. Now, the original sin, actually, is that you have forgotten who you are. That's the real original sin. At the, worst, at the first wink of dawn, your dream goes on. You think you are awake, but your dream goes on in the sleep of forgetfulness. Could you remember who you really are? You would laugh at the angels, at your nonsense. So we wake up in the morning, and it is a new day, a new opportunity for each and every one of us. But sometimes we forget who we are, and that you are a spirit now as much as you can be. Well, to be or not to be, that not that the question? To be or not to be? And you know, it says that you were made in the image and likeness of your Creator. So, you know what that means? That means your Daddy owns this place. How many people say that prayer? Our Father who art in Heaven. Now, do you take that literally? Well, if you do, that means your Daddy owns this place. And if your Daddy owns this place, who are you? You are God's sacred child. You are God's sacred child. So the Master Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. You know, last week we talked about a little bit about the natural law, and we said this, that there is no such thing as your mind, my mind, and God's mind. There's only one mind. And we all live and move and have our being in it. Okay? So when the Master Jesus says, these things I do, you can do also, at least, even the least among it, through all that I do, and even more. Okay? But you know what the big secret is? There is no such thing as the least among you. Now, some of us uh, come up with the excuse, well, I'm not smart enough, I'm not handsome enough, I'm not pretty enough. Well, nonsense. Okay? You are a holy divine being, made in the image and likeness of your Creator. Now, there is no such thing as a learning disability. There is only an inability to be taught the way that you learn. So it has to 
do with you was figuring out how you learn, how you learn. Now, whatever your skill is, God gave each and every one of us a natural skill, a talent, all right? Now, the good news is that you don't have to invent the wheel. There are people out there in the world that have the skill that you have. And so, we can ask our angels, basically, to help us to bring those people in our life. I remember many years ago, a friend of mine asked me, John, why don't you study yoga? I love, I love yoga and Eastern things. And so I went into the next room and I said, God, if you feel as though I should study yoga, find me a possible teacher, the best possible teacher. And I saw this little chubby man sitting on a cushion in my mind. A couple of weeks later, they were celebrating in Montreal, Canada, um, Hare Krishna's birthday for the Hindu people. And here comes this chubby little man, sits in a cushion in front of me, and that was my teacher. That is my teacher. Okay? So, anything you want to learn, your guides will help you to find those people. They can make it happen accidentally on purpose. I'll say that again. They can make it happen accidentally on purpose. But you have to be sincere. Now, you know, one of the natural laws that people love to talk about is the natural law of attraction. But you have to be serious. You know, some of you have probably read that little book, The Four Agreements, right? Okay? And it says that you have to be sincere. So if you want to manifest something in your life and you're not sincere, don't worry, it won't happen. But if you are sincere, you will manifest it. You will manifest it. Now, your ancestors on the other side of life also have an interest in you develop your skills, developing your skills. There is a saying in the East, it's called healing the family tree. Healing the family tree. So when one person here in this world and your family does very well in life, it benefits all other members of the family, by the way. And that's why in spiritualism, you know, God bless the grandmothers. <laughs> if you've ever had, a, ever, ever had a service at Lily Dell, the grandmothers are always coming give us messages, right? And the grandfathers, and the fathers and the mothers. They have an interest in you. Because they want you to develop, they want to encourage you. So not only do we have spirit guides, masters and angels, we have our loved ones around us that are here to help and to uh, support us. So God is infinite, indivisible and unalterable goodness. Goodness includes peace, love, power, strength, knowledge, faith, presence, justice, mercy, harmony, health, and prosperity. As God is infinite and unalterable goodness, then all goodness must be eternal and the opposite must be false appearances. As life, truth, and understanding are eternal, then death, falsehood, and ignorance must be false appearances. As love, strength, knowledge, and faith are eternal, then hate, weakness, fear, and doubt must be false appearances. As God is love, in everywhere at all times, then prejudice and aversion are false appearances. So remember that you were made in the image and likeness of your Creator. Okay? Now, in spiritualism we talk about having spirit guides. When you get to know who your spirit guides are, you get to know what your natural talents are. Okay? I'll say that again. When you get to know who your spirit guides are, you get to know what your natural talents are. They know your soul agreements. It's called the Akashic Records. They know the records and the agreements that you made before you stepped into this world. All right? And when you get to know them, you get to know who your spirit guides and friends are. So, each and every one of us have teachers and guides. You know, sometimes it's normal that we feel lonely and lost. But it's impossible for you to be alone. If you knew who walked beside you at all times, literally it would blow your little mind. Okay, that's how important you are. That's how important you are. So again, God is infinite, indivisible, and unalterable goodness. So goodness, so the word God literally means good. That's what the word means, by the way. And so we all have that, but in spiritualism, we actually 
develop what is known as the gifts of the Spirit. You know, in the early Christian church, you used to stand up and give messages. And they talk about the gifts of the Spirit in Corinthians. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is the ability to discern the Spirit. That's mediumship. That's mediumship. Okay? So in spiritualism, we carry on that tradition. We carry on that tradition. Now, it is true we call it spiritualism, but people have been talking to angels and beings and family since the beginning of time. All the Bibles in the world, the Bible, the, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, all the Bibles and sacred books in the world were written by people who use this part of their mind. Use this part of their mind, okay? Now, why do we call them gifts of the Spirit? Well, they were given to you before you were born. And that's a gift to you. That's a gift to you. So we all have different gifts. We all have different talents. And your guides and angels will help you to discover that if you give them a chance. I always like to ask this question. Does anybody here know of any spiritual master teacher who never meditated? And if you do, I'd like to know what their name is. It doesn't exist. I always like to uh, remind you that, remember, a long time ago, when there was just a few people who knew how to read and write, everybody else thought they were special. It was superstition. It's normal and natural. So I love to call it intuitive literacy. So there's academic literacy and there's intuitive literacy. So in spiritualism, we help you to become intuitively literate. Okay? And it's a gift that was given to you before you came into this world. And each and every one of us are intuitive. You know what the good news is? If you have, and I mean this literally, if you have a right side of your brain, you're intuitive. And when you meditate, you leave the left side of your brain, you go into the right side of your brain, and you wake that up. Now, what does the word Buddha mean? The, Buddha, the word Buddha literally means to be awake. Because most of us are are sleeping, by the way. You could say we're all kind of sleeping prophets. You know, in spiritualism, one of the gifts of the spirit is that we love to go into trance. People want to learn how to go into trance. Well, guess what? You're already in a trance. We're trying to wake you up. <laughs> we're trying to wake you up. Now, when you develop those, those abilities of the spirit and you really get good at meditating, then you have access to all sorts of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things beautiful things. And very simple little things. For instance, yesterday I was in um, Tampa and I, I lost my car. How many people have lost their cars sometimes? I lost my car. So I'm walking around this, I'm walking around Tampa in this, um, oh, in the parking lot for about 20 minutes. I say, okay, I have an Uncle Kenny who's a good mechanic in the spirit world. I say, okay, that's enough. Where's my car? And all of a sudden, it's under the bridge, came into my mind. Okay. <laughs> And so if you're mindful, you realize that even the simple little things, they will help you and they will encourage you. But no man can reveal to you aught but that which already lies asleep in the dawning of your knowledge. It is up to you to make that step. Okay? Faith without works is empty. Faith without works is empty. And if you knew that God is your Father, Natural law, he's your mother. All beings are your family. All relationships are sacred. Neighbor is your brother. Make your work a manifestation of your passion. Seek ye first the kingdom of God that is within you through prayer and meditation. And let your mantra be, I am. And if you begin to realize that the kingdom of heaven is within, it's actually in your hands. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, the whole destiny in the palm of your hand, eternity in an hour. It's all here and it's all now. So, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Do you not know the world is unfolding the way that it should? Therefore, be at peace with God, whoever you can see him or her or that infinite intelligence to be. And whatever your trials and tribulations, dreams and aspirations, and the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be joyous, strive to be happy.
Thank you.